Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Rio's how-to video series. I'm Russell Miller with Rio Products, and today I'm gonna to show you how to nymph like a European. European nymphing, there's a lot of mystery behind it, but uh, we at Rio Products have developed a line of European specific lines and leaders and tippet material to help demystify this and make it easy to go walk out and fish these methods. So European nymphing essentially is called that because it was born out of Europe, right? Friendly competitions between countries led to specific techniques and those techniques led to the products that we're gonna be fishing today. I've got the Euro line from Rio and this line says two through five at the bottom of it. This is mostly a level line because the technique really has specific characteristics that need to be done. A level line delivers that best. We're throwing the weight of the flies, not the line. So the Euro line is really great for that. Off of the Euro line, I'm gonna put on our Euro Nymph leader. This leader gives us a wide range of tec techniques we can fish, from dry fly fishing, dry dropper, short line, and long line fishing, all in one convenient leader package. And then our good friend Floriflex Plus. This tippet material is really, really great underneath the water. A lot of really great properties of fuller carbon, and I fish it in seven through three X, and I'm gonna vary my size based on the size of the flies I'm fishing, right? Thin diameter tippet cuts through the water really, really well, and so that's why I choose to have all the different sizes all the way down to seven X. So I'm gonna show you how to rig this technique, and then we're gonna go out on the water, and I'm gonna show you how to fish it. So at the end of our Euro Nymph line, uh, there's a hot orange section, uh, with a loop in it, and that leads right into our, our Euro Nymph leader, which is this great milky white material that you can see very, very well out on the water. That comes pre-tied with our bicolored indicator material that ends in a tippet ring. So when you get the leader out of the package, you get it all ready to tie on your tippet, and you tie your tippet on to be one and a half times the depth of the water you want to be fishing. So I've attached level 5X here, down to my surgeon's knot with my tag end, and about 20 inches below that is where I'll tie my dropper when I go to fish my two-fly rig. So on the, on the point, I'm gonna put on um, my heavier fly. I like my heavier fly at the bottom. It adds weight to the entire rig and keeps everything nice and taut. So for my top one, I'm just gonna choose a little bit smaller nymph. This one's got a little uh, two and a half millimeter tungsten bead on it. My bottom one has a three millimeter tungsten bead, and that's all the weight I need to get down to the bottom here. So before we get fishing, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what the purpose of this colored tippet material is. Um, because I think it's really important. This is your eyes to the underworld here when we're fishing these nymphs. And so the angle at which I'm fishing this, if I'm fishing really low, it means I'm fishing a low riffle. You can see without changing the weight of my flies, I can keep them off the bottom, right? And I'm just moving it along. Every now and then I touch bottom. If I change the angle on it and I go really high, my flies are just gonna stop and be grab on the bottom. You can see now the indicator is stopped, right? And it's just hang, hung up on a rock. So I can change how I fish my flies just based on what angle I have my indicator material facing, whether it's high or whether it's really low. And so if I'm fishing a drop off, like you see in the background here, the way I wanna fish it is I wanna fish it low, low, low. And as I come off the edge, I'll simply lift my rod and let my nymphs fall underneath the colored material, and that's gonna allow them to drop. So I'm gonna walk down to this drop off here, and I'm gonna show you some good short line technique. So with the short line technique, what I'm gonna focus on doing is keeping my rod tip high, and I'm just gonna lob my flies in, is let my flies access the bottom, feel out the bottom, holding my rod tip very high, and just bounce my flies along the way on the way down. A take feels very obvious because everything is so tuned and so light here. Boom, those fish hit very, very hard and uh, you don't miss the takes very often. And you can see when I set the hook on one of these fish, all I do is I simply lift away from the take. So I'll, like I'm gonna recast, I lift my rod high and let that soft tip really uh, absorb the shock of the eats. And when you can do that, you can really be, you can drop your flies right down to where the fish are feeding, slide it right into their face, and set that hook. And you notice when I'm setting the hook, I'm not ripping the, the line up or anything like that. I'm literally just getting tight with it. I say the hook set is close, closer to fishing streamers or something like that, or fishing on the swing, where you're just tight instantly to your rod.
Nice Snake River cutthroat. Barbless fly comes right out. We'll let him go and have fun with another one. That's short line nymphing in a nutshell. And I'm going to show you a little bit about long line nymphing and give you a little bit better idea of how that works on a little bit different water type. So here we're in a very different piece of water than we were at before. Um, fishing under my rod tip really isn't a possibility here. I can be much more effective if I start opening up my cast a little bit and fishing uh, some longer line techniques. Again, the French and Spanish have done a great job of pioneering a lot of this. Um, but I'm going to show you a little bit about it. Uh, the cast to get it started, we're working on a tuck cast here. So you can see I'm stopping my rod tip really high and letting my nymphs plunge over the top of the rod. And what that does is it allows the nymphs to hit the water and go straight down and not have any tension on the line that's going to pull them so they can access the bottom very quickly. So when I come, I start my cast, I do a tuck cast. You can see my rod tip comes nice and high and the nymphs fall underneath it. My goal is to keep my colored cider just off the water, right? Because as I fish it, I'm going to perform my tuck cast. And as I fish it, I'm going to start using my left hand now to control that line and allow that indicator to kind of get slowly come back towards me, right? And you'll see it here. So my left hand starts to become very active and I keep my rod tip very high and now I'm visually looking for any cues in my indicator when it jumps, right? It's got a nice slack bend in it. When it pops straight, I pop the hook. And if there's no fish there, I just recast the, the flies and get it right back in there. And so what I'm gonna do for a piece of water like this, long line fishing, is I'm just gonna start to grid it off and work my way from left to right. And as I do that, I can make some cast corded across and again, my left hand controls that line to keep that indicator just off the water. Any stop in that indicator, I'm gonna set that hook. And you can see the difference, right? If I just lay my line on the water and then have to lift it up, right? It's very different than performing a tuck cast and letting those flies land first and then having the indicator stop just on top of the water. Right, do you see the difference there between this and this? and now lift it back up off the water. And I want my indicator to fall right in line with whatever seam I want to fish. So this broken water right ahead of me, I'm going to have to make my cast, and now I'm going to have to come over my left shoulder with my rod tip in order to keep my cider in line with the contour of that current. And it's just as easy to do it over my left shoulder as it is my right shoulder. Slide up a little bit, perform a nice tuck cast, and a fish on. Nice little brown trout on the point fly again. You can spend a lot of time experimenting with these techniques, both long and short line. When done properly right, they're seamless between the two. I can fish long, I can fish short, uh, but it's all kind of based in this European method. And I hope you guys take these techniques out onto your local waters and just figure out how fun they can be to fish like this. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rio's How-To Video Series. See you out there.